Hello, comrades, and welcome back to Shanka Show. Здравствуйте, дорогие товарищи. Shanka Show is the program dedicated to the stories about life in the Soviet Union. Today I would like to go back to the topic of the Soviet retail. And uh, for those who maybe missed it or just joined this channel, I have a whole playlist. It's called Soviet Retail, where I already covered a bunch of topics about different retail outlets in the Soviet Union. And we're going to talk about the little bit unusual form of retailing going on in back in the USSR. It's uh, you can translate it as like selling out of barrel. So that will be selling out of little tanks on the wheels that we park on the street. But before we start our story, we need to learn a couple of new Russian words. First word is торговля, which you can translate as trading or retail. So usually if you are in торговля business, that means you're usually in retail. So торговля. And the second word is бочка, which you can translate as a barrel. So it has a several meanings. Like a regular barrel will be бочка. And also there's big barrels or tanks on the wheels that we're going to talk about today, also called бочка. So as I mentioned earlier, today we're going to talk about the retail out of the barrels. And the first we're going to talk about kvas. I'm not sure how many of you are familiar with this traditional Russian uh, drink. It tastes somewhat like beer. Like I drink kvas, I can't stand beer. Uh, my son tried it, Oliver, and he said it tastes like liquid bread. But it's bread-based drink. And usually... We drink it in the summer, so instead of pop, uh, people, a lot of Russians were drinking kvas. It's nice and refreshing and has a little bit of alcohol in it. So back in the Soviet Union, kvas was sold only in these barrel trailers. You couldn't buy them in any other way. Like you couldn't go to the store and buy a bottle of kvas. Now you can purchase, you know, two liters and all kinds of plastic bottles, glass jars. In Soviet Union, it was only out of the barrels. And by the way, for those who are interested and brave enough or curious enough to try kvas, I always post the link below my videos to the RussianTable.com and you can, guys, try it. Buy some Soviet era, I mean, it's modern made, but it's like a Soviet era foods and uh, you can purchase like a one liter bottle and uh, give it a shot. But first of all, I would like to mention a little bit about these barrels. So they were produced at the factory. There's a food grade barrels. They had a 900 liters volume, which is about 230 gallons. And there was another small uh, tank inside too for water. And I'll explain later, but it's basically when you buy by cup, they had a little like a cold water spray fountain. That's how they wash the glass cups. So basically you bring kiss in neighborhood if you're drinking out of cups. And I did it for years, never even thought about it. So if you look at this picture to the left, that's those glass cups that you purchase kvas or piva, which is beer or wine. And to the right at the white plastic circle, that's that fountain. So you just kind of put your cup upside down and push down. It makes the water spray and it kind of washes the insides and a little bit outsides, but you know, it doesn't disinfect or anything like that. And of course, in the middle, that's a metal valve, ball valve. That's where you pour kvas or beer. So let's talk about prices. Kvas was very inexpensive, very affordable. Uh, so you could buy it in a small cup and it could be with the handle without and the price was three copics. A bigger cup, or you call it probably a mug, and the official name was a beer mug. It was a half of the liter, 0 0.5 liter mug, and that one was six copics. Now, if you don't remember, to buy a bus ride was five copics. So this is your price points right there. So of course, if you buy a half of liter for six copics, one liter is 12 copics, duh. But usually, or people, you know, they're just thirsty, it's a summertime, so they stop, purchase a big or small mug, have a drink, or if they want to buy some to take home, then they bring so-called bidonchik. So that's a small 
metal container with enamel inside and outside and it's a three liter volume and they will fill it full up to the top the price will be 40 kopecks so for comparison a 0.33 liter bottle of Pepsi back in the day was 45 kopecks so you have a 30 kopecks Pepsi plus 15 kopecks deposit for the glass bottle so you got 0.33 liters of Pepsi for 30 kopecks or you can get half of the liter of kvass for 6 kopecks a huge difference you have a healthier drink for way less money and it seems as uh, foreign tourists were quite fascinated with this selling goods out of the barrels so because uh, quite often if we see pictures of the Soviet streets and people in the line trying to buy kvass it will be some American tourist or Western European tourist like as I mentioned I got a whole bunch of slides from my distant relative American relative Bill who passed away now and he was in Russia or Soviet Union in the early 70s and early 80s he went twice I believe and he took a lot of photos of people purchasing kvass out of the barrel trailers okay so next product that was sold out of the barrels was beer or as we say in Russian, piva. So there is another Russian word you might want to learn, piva, beer. Now, beer you could purchase several ways. You could buy out of kegs in like little beer bars. You could purchase them out of glass bottles. We didn't have any aluminum cans beer available in Soviet Union. Or you could buy it out of the barrel on a street. As I mentioned earlier, I don't drink beer. But it seems like back in the Soviet Union, the most popular type of beer or brand of beer was called Zhigulovskaya. And about 90% of all beer sold and produced in Soviet Union was that type, Zhigulovskaya. And the cost of the large beer mug, which is a half of liter mug, was 22 kopecks. So roughly almost four times more expensive than kvass. Okay, moving along. So next product that you could buy out of the barrels on the wheels was milk as we say in Russian malako and when my brother was born that was one of my duties as an older brother my mom would send me early morning and we're talking like 5 a.m. with bidonchik with that little uh, metal container and I'll go find there'll be specific spots when the collective farms will bring their barrels with milk and of course it was raw milk it was not pasteurized and there'll be a line of people, I don't know, it can be 10 people, it can be 5, if I'm depending on how lucky you are. So you want to come as early as possible so you get some milk and line won't be that long. And you just get in line with that bidonchik and then you buy milk. The price for 1 liter of milk, we're talking raw unprocessed milk, was 28 kopecks. And it doesn't sound like much, but if you compare to the cost of the bus ride, I figure out that would be equal of paying $32 per gallon. So the gallon of milk will be $32. That's how much you can, how many times you can ride a bus in New York uh, for the same price. So, or public transportation was heavily subsidized or milk was very expensive back in the Soviet Union. I don't know. You also could purchase, and I didn't know that, wine out of the barrel trailers. Now, the reason I didn't know that they never sold wine like in Kiev that way. You only could purchase wine you know, in bottles at the stores. Now down south at the vacation spots like Crimea or you know, Russian shores of Black Sea, you could find for sale wine out of the barrels. So when you're done looking at the sexy Soviet beast and his sexy Soviet speedos drinking wine, on the barrel it says drying dry grape wine Suhoya Vinogradne Vino which kind of funny like I don't know well I guess now they make wine out of different things but usually if it's wine it means it made out of grapes and it seems as prices were different depending on different brands so some were more expensive so what I found as I never had any wine out of barrels the cheapest will be like 12 kopecks for a small glass which is a quarter of the liter and nicer more expensive wine will be 50 kopecks which was pretty pricey 
And of course, no one was checking IDs. I mean, what kind of ID are you gonna have except your Speedos? They look like you may be a grown man or not, right? So you just come to the lady, give her 50 copecks, she pours you a glass of wine, you have a shot and you're good to go. You continue your adventures on the beaches of the Black Sea. All right, guys, I hope you liked this video and I hope you learned something new about life in the Soviet Union. And we'll talk to you soon. До свидания. Goodbye. Hey, by the way, the cool merch for cool comrades is available at the Ushanka store at teespring.com. And if you love my channel and would like to show your support, please click on the link below this video and become the patron of the Ushanka show. For as little as one dollar, you can help us grow and create the new interesting videos about the life in Soviet.